Good day and welcome to STL Bricks Insight where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now in the current escalating trade war between the US, the EU and China, will there be a winner or there will be three losers? Now the US continues to impose sanctions on the sale of powerful microchips to China, also encourages and some say coerces and bullies its vassals like the Netherlands and Japan not to sell equipment for the manufacture of chips to them also. Now the EU for its part has slapped large tariffs on electric vehicles from China, solar panels and other equipment for their new net zero energy drive. Now China is quietly assessing its options. It may already have restricted the export of certain rare earth metals that are essential for the manufacture of microchips, solar panels and a whole host of other modern electronic goods. Now, if it goes further, it will not matter if the US bans the sale of the chips as the US and its allies will not have the ability to manufacture the chips themselves due to insufficient quantities for even their own consumption. Now, let's bear in mind that the West imports practically everything needed to make the chips. Yes, all the ingredients from the silicone, the rare earths and even the nuclear fuel for the electricity to power the plants and the ingredients for wind turbines and so on are all pretty much all imported. It cannot be overstated the significance of China, which is the world's foremost producer of numerous raw materials or their processing, including graphite, lithium, refined copper, to the supply chains of the technology sector. I mean, Beijing's control over extraction and production of these minerals, both in China and abroad, particularly in Africa and Indonesia, is a key factor in their significance. Now this is occurring in parallel with the expansion of the IT and electronics sector. So it's understandable this situation gives rise to concern and frustration in the West, particularly the United States, which has identified China as its key competitor. Now before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund my channel and my website seobricksinsight.com to further develop it. This can be done by making a small donation, which you can do by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen on the right hand side. Everybody who donates does get a personal thank you from me. And also I'll thank you now just for watching. Now according to John Harrison of TS Lombard, Beijing's been tightening its grip on rare earths and other critical technology commodities for the past 10 years. Now this includes comprehensive control including permits for like exploration and extraction and the regulation of the entire production process. As a result, Beijing's increasingly restrictive policies, Western companies are facing greater challenges in accessing these resources. Now the West doesn't produce anywhere near enough domestically, so they're dependent on imports. And of course, China's the largest of these, and plus most of the other suppliers are much smaller. And if they can't replace the volumes that China has, so if they try there, they're going to be lost. Now if the US turns away from China or decides to punish it with council sanctions, they're going to have serious problems. I mean, according to the International Energy Agency, China controls 80% of the world's global graphite supply and 60% of rare earths. Now, this is mainly due to its significant refining and processing capacity. According to analyst uh, Amira Dasputa, uh, China is the world's leading producer of refined copper, lithium, cobalt, graphite and rare earth magnets. It's also responsible for the production of 99% of the graphite used in batteries, in addition to 60% of the lithium, 40% of the refined copper, and over 80% of refined rare earth magnets and refined cobalt. Furthermore, China exercises complete control over the entire graphite anode supply chain. It's also the world's largest antimony producer. Last year, it accounted for more than 48% of global production. Now, antimony is used in a wide variety of things, like the range of semiconductor devices, solar batteries, ceramics, and glass. I mean, 
The EU and EUS uh, anti consumers are heavily reliant on imports of China County for a significant proportion. According to 2023 data, Chinese antimony supplies made up 30.5% of antimony and concentrate exports and 63% of the oxide finished metal and powder exports. Another analyst from the IEA, an expert on minerals, is uh, Shohan Dia. He forecasts that China will maintain its dominant position in refined copper until at least 2040. Mr. Dia is confident that Beijing will overtake copper as a Peru in copper production. The IEA analysts are confident that re China will remain dominant in the nickel market, despite the fact that 52% of the world's nickel pr productions currently in, concentrated in Indonesia. But it's worth noting that Chinese businesses account for 40% of the production in Indonesia last year. And China's share of lithium mining and production grew from 6% in 2016 to 17% in 2023. Now, analysts anticipate that Beijing will surpass Chile to become the second largest lithium producer in 2026. You know, the significance of critical minerals is China is highlighted by the growth of its mining investment both domestically and internationally, states Dia. To illustrate the point, Chinese business investment in mining related to the Belt and Road Initiative it reached a peak in 2023 at 19.4 billion, and that's a 160% increase year on year. Now, Beijing's making significant investments in foreign mining application operations around the world. Now, it's particularly active in Africa, where its investments are in excess of 10 billion just in the first half of 2023. And many of those metals are essential for the production of electric vehicles, where China holds the leading position. I mean, two thirds of the electric cars in the world are assembled in China. China is also the dominant player in the global battery industry, 85% of its production, and 90% of the cathodes and 98% of the anodes. Additionally, the country is a leading producer of solar panels, wind turbines and hydrogen electrolyzers, which are closely related to the green transition. Now, the 14th five-year development plan of the People's Republic of China outlines a significant investment of $6 trillion into the green economy. Now, while silicon is not a scarce resource, it's also another that's significant to the contemporary economy. And China does a dominant share in that, as well as every other area of metals. Now, a significant aspect of China's comprehensive control over crucial and scarce metals is its capacity to control and influence the prices through its dominant market share. Now, it can reduce prices to gain the upper hand over its uh, competitors, or it can increase them to uh, annoy them. Its dominance for the critical materials is the fact that the US has declared its war against China. Now, in response to China's export development model, which relies heavily on these metals and minerals, Washington seeks to sever its economic ties. Now, it's going to have to find alternatives, but that's really not going to work too well. I mean, Taiwan, for example, might be the world's leading producer of high-end chips. Without the raw materials, all its technology is useless. So it looks like China's got an advantage in this inconcealed and ill-thought-out trade war. In my opinion, it's the US and the EU that are going to lose. But again, given the history of the past three decades and their behaviour, I'm not surprised. Now, John Harrison of the IEA believes that uh, China has rarely used its dominant position in the critical uh, materials market to achieve its goal, but it's got the control over them, and now it may just do it. I mean, it's using this strategy because of Washington's restrictions on its high-tech supplies to China and the equipment for producing the advanced chips. So the US and the EU may think they can harm China with their sanctions and their tariffs, but it's China that has the upper hand and has the rest of the developing world on its side as it looks to expand fair trade around the world. And the US is just going to have to come to terms with its role as the global bully that then bends every country to its will is over and the multipolar world has emerged. China is a competitor and is going to have to get used to it. Now it may take them some time. But it seems that the EU has now acknowledged and accepted that it has a reduced role to play on the global stage after its disasters in sanctioning Russia and cutting off its cheap energy supplies. 
anyway thanks for watching please like subscribe and share and if you've enjoyed it you can help me fund the channel by making a small donation do that by clicking the thanks button also the comment section i look forward to uh, reading and responding to all your comments i do love to get them and i do love responding to them thank you and i'll see you all again soon